Welcome, everybody, to another episode of What a Concept. This is where we do a deep dive into our favorite concept records. And today we have the amazing guest, as we always have amazing guests. But we have uh, Ian from Rhyme Signatures. Welcome, Ian. Howdy doody. How we doing? Oh, we're doing great. And I'm glad you're here. So oh, me too. <laughs> um, you were the one that chose this record. And ditch, um, ditch. people already know what record it is. So let's just let's just dive right into it. <laughs> let's what ignore record... the, you know, <laughs> uh, there's, no rec... there's no hype. Just, just there. There's no hype. I mean, there is hype. There is. Well, hype. I mean, yeah, there is hype. There's the mystery. There is the mystery is gone. You know? <laughs> that's right. That's right. So what album are we listening to today? And why did you pick this one? Okay, so the record I've selected, as I'm sure everybody is already aware from the thumbnail and title, is Into the Electric Castle by the fabulous Arion, of course, the um, multi-project power from Dutch instrumentalist Arjen Lucassen. Now, I picked this album, specifically this particular one, and it did take me a little bit of sort of umming and eyeing because I really wanted to do an Arion record because I think for me personally, from like how I got into progressive metal, Arion has always been that sort of quintessential uh, bridging point for me for like from not listening to prog metal to listening and obsessing uh -huh. over the genre. Uh -huh. So I was like in two minds with this one. I was thinking, do I go for the obvious pick? Do I take the human equation? You know, the, yeah. the record which really sort of got me into Arion. And the reason obviously why I got into the record in the first place was because you had you know, like James Labrie was on there. I was obviously yeah. big into Dream Theater at the time. Mikhail Ackerfeld was on there, kind of into Opeth. And I was really big into Shadow Gallery at the time as well. And you had the late Mike Baker was on there as well. So he had a lot of really, really great names on there. Yeah. And that was very much my intro point. So, but I think it was a little bit too obvious to pick that one. So uh -huh. I decided instead I wanted to pick um, Into the Electric Castle because I think for me personally, certainly from a narrative perspective, I think it's a much more interesting album i think it's a much more unusual story certainly told from within this sort of perspective of the typical narrative that you get from progressive rock and metal you know for me it kind of it's kind of like a doctor who episode you know okay. yeah. it's like a multi-part doctor who episode like a two or three parter either that or it's like somebody's decided to run a two or three shot DD &D campaign yeah. the dungeon master is obviously the forever of the stars and then you've got the player characters are all sort of i mean even the archetypes are there you've got the barbarian you know you've yeah. got the knight you know you've yeah. got the future yeah. it all feels like they're D, D archetypes and it was a lot more fun for me uh -huh. and when i really started getting into this album more because it was hard for me to get into Into the Electric Castle, like, originally, because I've always had a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Damien Wilson, and he's one of the uh -huh. prominent singers on here, but I think that his, I don't want to say limited role, but he's obviously, like, not the main, like, voice within here, so I was able to handle it a lot more. But what really pushed me towards trying this album out, because it was a number of years, actually, after I first discovered The Human Equation that I even started listening to anything before that, because I was very much the case of, like, it's human equation or anything afterwards. I don't care about what came before. I was just like not that interested. Right. right. But I went through a huge thing with within temptation. Like within temptation okay. became a big thing for me. You know, it was like a natural evolution for me from things like Evanescence and um yeah. what was that one that Floor Janssen was in? Uh oh, After Forever. Uh, yeah. I think it was after was it after Forever, I think. I Something like that. So, yeah. And like Nightwish and all that sort of stuff. And then I discovered within temptation with like Sharon Del Sharon Del Adele and um robert westerholt obviously on there and they were both on into the electric castle and i was like oh shoot have i been sleeping on a classic you know i was just like hang on a bit <laughs> i gotta go back we're going back and we're looking into this and i loved it from like the first spin until the very end i absolutely loved it i feel it's one of the slight despite the slight i don't know some goofiness of the plot and how ridiculous it actually is when you actually look into what the plot actually is it's one of the slightly more seriously told aspects as well, despite oh. the fact that you've got like Arjen himself playing a stoner hippie, which is a little bit on the nose, perhaps for a Dutchman to be doing that, <laughs> but he chose that himself, yeah. so you can't critique, you know. But yeah. I loved it. I absolutely fell in love with it. And it's an album that's really grown so much over the years, despite the fact it's like over 20 years old now. Uh -huh. it's, it's just such a vibe. I love it so much. And I just... I just really wanted to just talk about it for a bit, you know? Yeah, and that's fair. Like, I remember when you pitched Arion, and I'm like, all right, we're going to talk about human equation. We're going to yeah, talk yeah. about zero one. We're going to talk about theory of everything or something. And it's like, no, enter the electric castle. I'm like, oh, 
Okay, okay, okay. Because like, <laughs> <laughs> well, so I've had a very interesting relationship with Into the Electric Castle. Like I reviewed it way back in the day when I was doing my lead up to, I think it was the Source, where I was reviewing oh, sure. all of his records. And like I was first introduced to Arion through Zero One. Like Zero One was my first record from him. Um, absolutely loved it. Mm. Um, and then I realized I had listened to a handful of tracks from. Uh, the human equation because my buddy and I from high school would try to out weird one another by sending each other weird <laughs> songs and he's like I won here's a like a prog metal track that starts with a didgeridoo and it was from the human equation oh, and I'm like loser and, right and I'm like I didn't yeah. realize that that was Arion and I've been listening yeah. to that song for years and years and years prior to that and then I went back and I listened to the human equation and that now is still my favorite from him um but yeah, Into the Electric Castle, I never really connected with. Like, even mm -hmm. when I went back and I re-listened to it. And oh. I, uh, we'll get to this when we dive deeper into the, you know, the, you know talking about it. Sure, but I sure, feel sure. like I love the concept because, as you said, it's a Doctor Who episode. It's quirky. It's strange. <laughs> you know, you got all these weird characters from across history. Yeah. So the premise itself, unlike some of the other ones which are baked in metaphor and are using like a lot of different themes and concepts and things like that um are just kind of like a for a fun romp <laughs> you know it's just here for a fun romp <laughs> that's, um, yeah, that's it that's you know, it this is where the signature sound of arion kind of started you know like we had actual fantasy and we had um oh what was that other one that he had uh, i should know this um the final uh the final, ex final experiments yeah. that was the final first experiment one, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 and i'm like okay so they're playing like you know arjun is playing around he's 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 kind of finding his way within this prog metal landscape but i do think that you know into the electric castle was the one that he found that signature sound because yeah for me it feels like it was his breakthrough you know this is like where he realized what arian was supposed to be whereas uh -huh. it felt like actual fantasy was always kind of like a bit of a eh it's kind of just there and it sort of exists yeah. and it's i don't even really treat it as a serious arion album i know it technically is the it's the sophomore release but it was just uh -huh. i don't know it's like it's the only one well, i say it's the only one of his albums i never vibed with that's a complete <laughs> lie because transitors exists which was terrible yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, what have you got it oh you stop I, it <laughs> <laughs> no i would have a lot to say about transitors so if you had asked me to do that i'm like i have a lot to say it's not good <laughs> It's not. It's nothing good, but no, I have a lot to no, say about no. that record. <laughs> I think the term "wasted potential" comes to me when I think yes, about that. I'm absolutely. like, look at all these amazing musicians and Tom Baker, and you threw it in the bin. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, talk about a Doctor Who episode, um, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, kind of like the significance of this album, especially within like the artist's discography and mm, the career, because mm. we've we've kind of touched upon it. Um, you know, because this was, uh, as we mentioned, this is kind of like the breakout album. Um, oh, absolutely, it was. You yeah. know, actual fantasy and the final yep. experiment. You know, they were they were kind of laying down a little bit of the groundwork, but I think this was yep, the one yep, that yep. like has that signature sound. It's the one that Definitely pulls in like the classic singers. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Fish is found on this one, which oh, is like, I love that Fish is on it. It's so good, and that you like know, over the top Scottish accent he's doing is so much fun. It's, it's so ridiculous. So it's like yeah. you're, you're trying to pair the fact that this is the guy who was in like Marillion at the start of things and now uh -huh. he's here on a progressive metal album which isn't yeah. really that weird when you consider like Andy Tillerson is in like a progressive effectively death metal band with the anchorette so you know yeah. people can yeah. cross the streams effectively you know which is quite fun. Uh, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. but like um... it's a huge huge name within the progressive rock world and what I find so remarkable about Into the Electric Castle is the fact that you went from this um stuttering slow kind of proof of concept with the final experiment which very much uh -huh. felt like a um almost like a progressive folk album certainly in its narrative perspective the themes it talked about like you know you've got the avalon this and merlin that and like medieval england whatever all but like with this like sci-fi sheen the whole you know like airy on the blind minstrel of having visions of the future beamed into uh -huh. his mind to sort of sing of humanity's doom and try and prevent it which is so convoluted it's like my guy is that <laughs> the best you can come up with with your future advanced alien race this is yeah, how you yeah, try and yeah. solve the world's problems okay cool love that great cool yeah. cool cool yeah. <laughs> you know and so you go from that weird esoteric concept where you have a few guessings but not really i don't want to say nobody of note because every musician is of note but not Absolutely. like big names within the world to then go into actual fantasy which was kind of like a bit of a dud didn't much yeah. care for it 
but to come back from that commercial and critical, I suppose, failure in a way, to bring into what was considered to be one of his greatest albums, still his biggest selling album, and uh -huh. to include such names from the progressive rock and metal world, like Fish, like Damien Wilson, like Annika van Giersbergen, who were all big, big names, even like, I mean, they've only gotten bigger as time's gone on, obviously. Uh -huh. But these are names that most progressive rock and metal fans will obviously be aware of. And I think it was so significant that they were able to make such a success of this record and establish such an effective use of what would become the Aerion sound. You know, you think uh -huh. of the keyboard style that Arjen normally goes for. You think of that particular guitar tone. You think of the structuring of all of the albums. You know, these big double discers, this huge narrative concept like the idea of the forever of the stars the uh, quintessential alien race within the narrative of the Arion you know, concept as it were which sort of yeah. goes through all of it effectively with the possible exception of the theory of everything yeah, yeah I, I was I'm kind still, of disconnected a bit yeah i mean it could be argued that the um you know the aliens are the inspiration they're in the drugs they're in the yeah you know, yeah, but I mean, you have to kind of dig for that. It's not, you it's not, do. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. context, it's not even <laughs> subtext, it's yeah. added text. Exactly. It's not like the Universal Migrator 1 and 2 or yeah. even like the, the little plot twist at the end of the human equation where it turns mm -hmm. out, ha ha, it was the forever of the stars the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's what like, we... well, who saw that coming? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I love the fact that this sort of lays the foundations for the narrative groundwork of the entire project. And I just mm -hmm. think it's brilliant for that. And I think that's one of the reasons for me why it's so important. Like the original concept of the um, the final experiment kind of like gives you a bit of like that, you know, it's uh -huh. like, here is my grand scheme idea. There's the future and we're trying to stop everything from going to absolute balls. But then you've got like, it pans backwards a bit with Into the Electric Castle. And whilst you've got the direct focused narrative of these eight people, the grand scheme of things, you know, when it's revealed in the track called Forever of the Stars, where it's revealed who the narrator is, why he's brought them to this place and why they're doing it to these people it's that sudden sort of oh this is a much bigger universe than the individual narrative of this record is actually letting on and i think it's so significant and i love it for that yeah absolutely i mean we keep coming back to a doctor who like <laughs> idea right but it's almost like each of these albums are like the individual episodes of a season and then there's like this over reaching threat you know it's like it's the like master from season yeah bad <laughs> yeah, wolf yeah, or yeah. you are not alone or yeah you yeah know, we've kind of talked around the concept let's dive Ooh. deep into it you know I, what is the so actual good. concept of this record this is a narrative yeah. concept yes, it so is. it follows a story it has yeah. characters it's very it Jesus absolutely Christ, does. Superstar, right <laughs> it totally so, is I love that. so um <laughs> To you, what is, well, I guess not to you, because it's very yeah. plainly laid out. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> what's the story here? What are we talking about? Okay, what's the story? In fact, Morning Glory. So um, <laughs> anybody who hasn't actually listened to this record before, the narrative of this is, is a it's a very direct narrative. It's very straightforward. Certainly up until like kind of right until the very end, you know, there's not much scope for like um, nuance or subtlety here. Everything is kind of spelled out to you. But the basic structure of it is, is some cosmic entity, you know, let's just call him Bob or whatever, you know, Bob, the cosmic entity just goes, ha ha, eight people from space and time. I'm going to yoink you out of your collective existences for funsies. We're going to drop you on this little, uh, this little welcome mat here. And I'm going to have to say, ha ha, I have taken you up in your space and time. But for the, for the, like, you know, for the next 60 minutes, I need you to get to the electric castle. Why? Because I tell you to. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's effectively. Plot contrivances. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> plot contrivances. So he's basically he sets up a bunch of obstacles for our eight heroes who are, let me see if I can remember them off the top of my head. The Roman, the Indian, Barbarian, Highlander. Egyptian, hippie, future man, and knight. So, you know, your D&D &D character classes right there. Yep. Um, and the dungeon master being, of course, Bob the alien. And he basically says, here are a series of encounters which you have to get through. And it's not necessarily physical encounters. It's encounters of the mind, you know, like getting through the tunnel of light, the garden of emotions, the valley of the queens and all that sort of thing. So, you know, your track titles kind of line up to what's going on in the story kind of thing. Yeah. And... In effect, it's like some of you might die during this. You know, it's, it's like that like very Lord Farquaad. He's like, some of you may die. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that a sacrifice is a, I am yeah. willing to make. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's great. Absolutely. 
Yeah. And obviously, by the end of the story, like half of the participants have died. And if I remember correctly, I think at the end of it, it's Aryan's still alive, the hippie's still there, Fuchsman's still there, yeah. the knight and the Roman? I think so. Knight, Roman, Hippie, and Futureman. I think that's right. I think that's right. That so they right. all survive, right? Everyone else has died at some point or whatever. The, the barbarian is just like, uh, I'm because he gets to the point where they have to choose between two doors. It's like, it's it's like the whole um uh the Holy Grail thing, you like you chose yeah. poorly kind of thing. Yeah. It's like here's the bad old busted house door, here's the beautiful gold door encrusted with jewels. And the barbarian's like, I'm gonna go through that one, kicks it open yeah. and basically falls into the pit of oblivion, like whoops, lol. <laughs> he's Oops. like, Oh no, well, he's Rip. dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. screw that guy. Like, what an idiot. You know, mm -hmm. or you've, then you've got people like Sharon Dern, Adele's character, the Indian. She basically like meets death on the wind, literally meets death himself. You know, and is that yeah. one of the few moments of death metal vocals that you get within the, an Aerion concept as well? Apart from like maybe Devin Townsend on Day Sixteen, yeah. Loser, yeah. and she just like dies as well. So it's a whole big thing, like a series of misadventures and deaths, and eventually you get these four people at the end, and it turns out, you know, in the big plot drop at the end, I am forever of the stars. Are People basically populated the universe. We wiped out the dinosaurs with a kid's meteorite, like, lol, ha, <laughs> wrecked. Um, yeah. And we basically populated your planet to experience your emotions that we lost millions of years ago. So he's effectively kidnapped eight people out of space and time, put them through stressful and emotional situations in order to experience those emotions himself before sending them back to their own time. So like, yeah, I'm done with you now. Bored now. Yeah. Off you go. You know, yeah. and it's, it's, it's so weird. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, the kid with the brand new action figure, right? It's like, okay, I think <laughs> yeah, for an exactly hour and a half. Yeah. Now I'm going to put you back on the shelf. And yeah. Try yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they're like yeah. the mortal, he's like, your mortal lives are so trivial to me, blah, blah. Like, he doesn't care. You know, he's just an immortal yeah. alien species who's been alive for billions of years. And he's just playing with humanity. And it's just like, whoa, yeah. dude. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's a very good summarization of the the concept itself. I always like to dive a little bit deeper, especially within mm. these kind of narrative concepts, to try to find some of the themes and some of the mm. like underlining concepts that are found within it. Because it's like you know, any good story has you know the two types of plots. You have the overarching, very tangible, right from the beginning plot, but then you have these like underlying themes, these recurring aspects that come into it. And one of the big ones that I found within this record, especially lately when I've been sitting down and listening to it, is like the overcoming of struggles. It's the mm. kind of, and finding oneself through the turmoils. It's, you know, if you don't go through these things, then you can't really discover who you are. It's kind of like that, you know, kind of like the trolley problem where everybody oh, for sure. thinks- Everybody thinks that they would turn the the tracks yeah, to only you know, hit the one when person. When they're actually presented with it. Would you actually do it? And yeah. so, like, I really like these kind of, and, you know, and that's where this universal creature, this, mm. this entity is like, okay, we know philosophically, we know intellectually what these things would do. You know, as this omnipresent billion year creature, I know what these creatures that we've studied and experienced would do. But I want to actually test that. I actually want to see what would happen. I, I like how that is mirrored through the music because that was something, mm. and we'll get a little bit deeper into the music in, in the next section. But I always like how they really like dive deep into like, and how the struggles are different for each of the individuals. You know, the knight struggle is very different than the Egyptian struggle. The Absolutely. hippie struggle is very different than the future men's struggle, right? Yeah. And I love how the hippies like, just sort of there vibing, like, okay, this yeah. is kind of cool. It's like, oh yeah, they're shaggy, right? Like, just yeah, hanging out. <laughs> that is literally it. It's literally yeah. like shaggy out of Scooby-Doo, just hanging out with all these like massively beweaponed armored knights and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. And yet at the end of the day, he's one of the last standing individuals. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. And it is very much like, it's how you, overcome these conflicts it's like these conflicts will obviously be with you throughout your your day to day and it's how you interpret it it's how you deal with it and sometimes mm -hmm. the best way to deal with it is just like hey that's life you know i can't exactly. fight it i can't you, you know i see the big <laughs> door i'm not going to kick it down and fall into the pit of yeah, despair. Yeah, yeah. i'm just going to vibe right yeah so. that's it that's it it's well it's like how you get the basically um you know, like when they're, they're at the decision tree and you've got one of them, I can't, is it the barbarian going on? I'm not going to die here. Screw you. I'm going to keep on going. Rah, 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 rah. You know, he's all like, yeah. uh, all like brash and bravado and all machismo. And like, mm -hmm. I'm right, you're wrong. And everything I do, I've like, you know, slaughtered hundreds of people. I'm a bloody brilliant barbarian battler or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, 
when the chips are down and he thinks he's making the right decision, it, it all his hubris comes back to haunt him and basically just yeah. sends him into the everlasting pit of everlasting ebony or whatever it is that's described <laughs> as. It's like, well, you're yeah. dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Were there any other, like, kind of deep underlining themes that you were picking up within the multiple listens? I do quite like um, kind of how we explore the idea of... Uh, how each of the individual, like p- people who lose, who do lose their way, how they individually come to it. Because obviously, like you've got um, fish, obviously ends up being the first to, to die, which is a shame, really, because I would have liked to have a bit more of him. Yeah, in it, and I to think be honest with part you. of that wasn't even narratively; it was just they only had him for one day, right? Yeah, so it's, it's like... <laughs> like well, we've got to somehow write this into it. Like fish is a busy boy, but because uh, yeah, he, he yeah. just he just sort of like kind of like going through the tunnel of light. He's like, hey, do you know what? Ah, you screw the light. I'm staying here. And he just he's like, he just dies. He's like, boys, I'm out. He's like, I'm, I'm done here. Scotland needs me. Bye. You know? right. It's like, okay, let's see you later, idiot. Whatever. Yeah. And then you've got um, obviously the Egyptian character where they're going through the Garden of Emotions, and she just becomes overwhelmed emotionally by the situation. You know, which is what the the voice warns them of is like, don't let your emotions overwhelm you in this place because that's what's going to get you. And she's basically yeah. becomes convinced that her god, like Amun Ra, is coming to get basically kick her ass and she yeah. just you yeah. know wanders around and dies <laughs> it's like yeah. okay bye again it's like okay, wow that's exactly. yeah. what it comes down to it, it feels like um it's almost like a commentary on the futility of fighting against inev- the inevitability of your own death it's just uh-huh. almost like it's preordained in these situations almost yeah. like the um the architect of this whole maze leading up to the electric castle he it's almost like they know which characters are going to make which decisions and they put these encounters in front of them is a way to sort of trim the pack. So uh-huh. for me, it's almost like it's a commentary on the futility of fighting against the inevitable weight of destiny, I suppose, as a way of yeah. looking at it in a sort of weird kind of way. Because obviously yeah. it's like um like Sharon Danadel's character, uh, you know, like the other the other characters say, no, don't what, what are you doing? It's just like stop doing that. And she just meets death on the breeze and she just that horrible bit where she just screams as she dies is like whoa oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the others yeah. are just like ah i'm just piecing out whatever and then you know sharon's just like oh god it's death i've literally been murdered by death itself like wow okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and this is actually a really good transition because like let's actually talk about the music here mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i love how with arian and this is where like we really nail this down is the music reinforcing the story and the concept because even though you have narratively the decisions that are being made and you know the the like actions that these characters are going through it's the music that is emulating the emotion and that's really what this overseer is studying it's studying the mm. emotions it's like Absolutely. what are these characters feeling and that is all brought within the music and especially when Absolutely. you know the character meets death that is definitely because it becomes so dark the music and the the vocal yeah. stylings it suddenly takes on like if you compare like the end of uh, what um I'm trying to remember which actual track is it the Valley of the Queens or the Garden of Emotions? It, it's one of those tracks where it happens at the end of it. Obviously, when when death comes along and just goes like ha ha, time to get you. <laughs> like you compare the stylistic feel of that music to, compared to something like um in the Decision Tree, we're alive, or Tunnel uh-huh. of Light, or Amazing Flight, uh-huh. or even something like as late on as the Two Gates, which is a lot more climactic feeling there's this real darkness to some parts of it which is really counteracted by the joviality of some parts of it, despite like the the danger and the uh conflict that these characters are going through the music uh-huh. still manages to have these moments of brevity these moments where it feels lighter than the rest of it and i feel like in tracks like especially things like like the tunnel of light like uh-huh. across the rainbow bridge, which feels so triumphant, you know. I love that bit where he goes, yeah. "Run, run, the future is undone." I'm like, "Ah, yeah. it's so yeah. hype! It's so yeah. cool! Yeah. I love it." Yeah, yeah, and even like um, as you were saying, like some of the more mellow parts, more of the like daunting parts. Like I'm, I'm reminded of the castle hall, which has like this dirge throughout it most mm. of the time, like this overwhelming like darkness. But even within it, you have this, and this is something that I think Arion does extremely well in Arjun like creates these areas for people to play in right and uh, i feel like he has smattered this album with that and i love within the castle wall where you have those big synths just like Mm. really playing through of like this whoa this like aspect of awe even this late in the game you know it's like you know first half of the second disc uh because 
double discers that's all we oh, cover yeah. here on this show <laughs> um, that's all we got that's all we got even all of these like really intense moments for like these big grand solos either within the keyboards or the guitars yeah i think that it really does like focus in on whatever emotion is being experienced by these characters either collectively or individually oh, absolutely yeah. And I think it's really quite clever the fact that Irons managed to do that because obviously narrative the whole point but you only realize or find out the whole point of the narrative is about extracting the emotional reaction of the participants in the, uh, the sort of experiment and uh -huh. it's really when that that bomb drops and you realize that that is the point of the narrative that you yeah. start to understand how clever it is and how well structured it is that Irons managed to make this record where even from like the very opening track of Welcome to the New Dimension, where you have the sense of confusion, the sense of sinisterness about it all, and you realize that even that early on, the elicitation of the emotional response from the participants into the from the narrative is so important and never misses mm -hmm. a beat from even from the very start right up until the very end. Absolutely. And like, I keep having to remind myself that this album came out in 98. Like, right? this this is a prog metal record that would fit very beautifully in like the 2010s, like very oh, absolutely. easily, you know? So like the, the jump in quality, you know, they're, they're playing with sounds that would be recreated by other bands over and over and over again. So mm. like, like musically, I keep having to tip my hat, like even though, you know, the Human Equation and Zero One came out, you know, five, ten years afterwards. Mm. Um, and those were the ones that I keep going back to. I keep having to remind myself, I'm like, oh, right. This wasn't like an album that came out two years prior to that. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, this was something that came out in 98, yeah, yeah. where like the closest that you would get mm. to this like style of prog metal is either a Dream Theater or Symphony X. Absolutely. Absolutely. hundred yeah. percent. Because I was just thinking to myself then like you say 1998 i mean what you've got you've got to think to yourself what was progressive metal doing in 1998 yeah. nothing like this i will tell you that yeah. for a fact now like even dream theater only released scenes from memory in 99 so mm -hmm. the album prior to that would have been falling into infinity which sounds yeah. quite and i will stand falling into infinity for like forever and a, a day Same. but that did not sound as polished or as like sort of well presented or as immaculately produced as this did. Cause I've been now, yeah. I've actually listened to both versions of them now. I've listened to the uh -huh. original 1998 one, which I have on CD. And I listened to the 20th anniversary remix again from uh, just on Spotify, whatever it was. Yeah. And I've got to be honest, I don't much care for the 20th anniversary remix. A little too I mean, polished. Honest with you, it's, yeah. it's not even just that it's too polished for me. It's they, they, they add little instrumental flourishes that aren't there in the 1998 original. Mm. And because I'm so familiar with the, the classic one, I've listened to it like hundreds of times. Yeah. When those little extra bits come in, I'm like, hang on a minute. What are you, why are you George Lucasing this thing? You know, stop that. You know, put it down. <laughs> you, know, you learned nothing, Ryan. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, you know, we're like two seconds away from like a, a CGI dance fest in Jabba the Hutt's palace at times. And I'm like, mm -hmm. stop that. Stop that now. Yeah, so yeah, I would no, say it's best to listen to the 1998 original first. I would agree. I would agree. And like, this might be a little bit of a spicy take, but like, I feel as if, again, 1998, this is the first true progressive metal record. Like with Symphony X coming out with, I think Divine Wings of Tragedy was around this time, you know, and Dream Theater is falling into infinity. Mm -hmm. And even if we go back into like the genesis of the prog metal stuff in the 80s with like Queen's Reich and Fate's Warning and all that, those albums I felt were metal records mm -hmm. that had progressive mm -hmm. rock elements in it. 100%. Right? This was the first progressive first metal yeah. second record. Absolutely agree. Because I with can't, that. I can't think of any other record that was a prog metal record that put the prog first. So, like for me personally, and as I try, if I try and think about, like you say, any other sort of like band or album or project or anything around from like the late '90s that was doing what Arion was doing on this album, I can't think of anything. There's nothing that comes to mind which was as ambitious or as um, creative as this, and I think. Again, this brings us back to why I feel this is such an important release within his catalogue, is that it really did, I think, and feel inspire a lot of stuff to come from this. Like, I can, I feel personally that pretty much any sci-fi focused progressive metal concept album that you care to think of within the last 20 years probably owes a lot to this. Like, I think of bands like Between the Buried and Me with Parallax 2. Yeah. I think of Parius with The Signal Heard Across Space. 
Those yeah. sort of things I don't think would exist without things like Into the Electric Castle. And I mean, this was something that Prague was always playing with. And this is why I think this was like the Prague first is that oh, yeah. they are tackling these, you know, space wizards, right? Like Prague is yeah, space yeah, wizards, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and that is literally <laughs> yeah. what is found on this record. So absolutely, yeah. absolutely yeah. it is. Yeah, um, I, just, right. I just love it for that. Oh, it's great. It's great. So this is the part of the show where we start to talk about uh, the negative aspects. You know, Ooh. is there anything about this record that we don't like? Anything that doesn't yep. quite work? Is the concept too heavy handed? <laughs> does it, I always like to say, does it get lost in the sauce, mm, right? Mm, mm. Um, is the story or the concept too hard to follow or does it make sense? Um, is there anything for you that is kind of in the negative for this record? Okay, so for me, when it comes to contextualizing the negatives of this album, it's it's quite difficult for me to really think about how to sort of put it into words, but I'll do my best. Okay. I do feel that the album is too long. It's absolutely 100% too long of an album. It's an hour and 44 minutes. And like, I think even for progressive rock fans, even for progressive metal fans, when we start seeing albums in the 60 minute, the 70 minute range, you know, that's long. That's that's still a, it's a big commitment to expect somebody to sit down and appreciate a record of that length in one go, but for an hour and forty four, yeah, it's a bit hours. much. It's a bit yeah. much, especially because like you kick off the album with like the little sort of um three minute narrative introduction, which is great, and then you immediately back to back with two two songs that are over ten minutes in length, back to back straight away, and I sort of like, whoa, okay, okay, just wind up before you, you you drop me in the deep end i am because i love isis and osiris and i love amazing flight they're both great tracks but uh they're a little bit like slam dunk too early you know it's like come yeah. on just pace yourself because the pacing of the record i think suffers a little bit as well as a result you know it feels like you're not given much chance to breathe you know you're given these 20 minute section plus of like constant flow and as good as those tracks are there are moments in them where I find it noodles a little bit, where it meanders musically a little bit, and it does feel like it's lacking the direction which I feel that he mastered better on later albums. Like, you think of Planet Y, you think of The Human Equation, they're shorter tracks, they're snappier tracks, they're more memorable tracks as well. Because I do feel, again, that Into the Electric Castle sacrifices a lot in terms of its um, musicality and accessibility in favor of a more narratively driven structure to its songwriting. You know, uh -huh. it feels like we don't have time for choruses. We don't have time for catchiness. We are telling a story here and you are either going to appreciate that form of um, storytelling or you aren't. And I feel in a lot of ways, like, Recent another recent example where I feel that um, uh, narrative was favored over like accessibility was on the new Azure album with Thim. Oh yes, which as much as I love that album and I do, it's one of my forerunners for album of the year. It much like Into the Electric Castle sacrifices accessibility and melodic fluency for narrative structuring, and I do yeah. feel that this makes Into the Electric Castle a very beginner unfriendly record it's not an easy thing to sit down and just listen to the whole way through until you're already familiar with it then you end up in a catch 22 situation like how do you become familiar yeah. with this this record unless, unless you, you spend the time and... exactly. Yeah, exactly exactly yeah and, and i think yeah yeah i think for me that's that you nailed it exactly on the head and probably part of the reason why i don't come back to this record as much as i do human equation mm. um zero one or the theory of everything because mm. like Unlike those records where upon the first listen, there were a handful, if not more than half the record, immediately stood out to me. You know, yep. there were moments on Zero One, like Beneath the Waves and the Fifth and Sixth Extinction, where mm. I'm like, oh, I remember those upon Fifth first listen. So you know, it's like, I want to yeah, go yeah, back yeah. and listen to those parts, you know, and yeah. I felt like Into the Electric Castle only has those parts upon repeated listens and mm, mm. because of the runtime of this record i don't feel immediately drawn to spend almost two hours to yeah really familiarize myself now over the years i've come to appreciate and i've come to love those parts it's not a very friendly onboarding record in that sense it's really like, not <laughs> it's really because, not <laughs> you know like upon my first even half a dozen listens i didn't have like 
that loser part i didn't have mm, that mm. love part i didn't have yeah. like those those standout tracks that i'm like For oh sure. i want to go back to and listen to yeah you know yeah, yeah, yeah. um it's like so... when because when you when you look at the stacked track listing of things like let's see if i can get it in one zero one zero one one zero zero one i think <laughs> it's zero one Planet zero y. one one zero zero one uh, yeah. There we go. Planet Y. Yeah. Well, because I know y. that a lot of people just call it Planet Y. But that's got some absolute bangers on it. Like, uh -huh. like I'm just look. I'll, I'll just, if I look at the track listing now, like you look at things like um, the truth is in here. Connect the dots. Controversial, but I still love it. You know, yep. it's a bit I silly, but but then ride the comet. You know, comatose. Oh. You know, the I sixth still, extinction. I still think ride the comet is the best cock rock song ever written. It's so much fun. It's I love so it. Good. It's so it's good. It's just it's it's such a bop. I love it. But then I look through the these listing and I'm I can hear them straight away in my head. I look at these song names and I can hear them straight away. You know, and it's the same with yeah. human equation. It's even the yeah. same with the source. You know, all the theory, the theory of everything, not quite so much because I don't really like the way that he split that up into like eight thousand tracks, like over like a minute long. <laughs> For me, and, it's no, no, no. For me, it's. Uh, one side there's only four tracks on human yeah. equation i don't believe in this splitting up into minute long chunks no no no. yeah there's four tracks on human equation that's it. yeah 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 yeah. theory of everything is a four track long album it is that's not it. a like 42 track long album stop uh -uh. that you're messing stop with my that. last fm stats you know it's very annoying <laughs> it's like on my last fm like the theory of everything is my most listened to Arion album only by the fact that there's 42 tracks on it stop yeah. that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh -uh. so annoying uh -uh. Only but despite track. that, as familiar as I am with Into the Electric Castle, like, and I've listened to this album literally hundreds of times. Like, I discovered yeah. this back in maybe 2006, I think, is when I first listened to this. So I've had nearly 20 years to listen to this album. And it got me through some pretty gnarly times during university. And, like, Arion in general did. So that was, like, one of Absolutely. my favorite things was just Arion. I had, like, an old-school mobile phone, like, really, really low-res picture of the cover of The Human Equation yep. as its background. And yep. you could barely tell what it was unless you knew what it was. But, you know, <laughs> it got me through a lot. But yeah, even like yeah. looking, like if I look right now at the track listing of this album, like Isis and Osiris, Amazing Flight, Across the Rainbow Bridge, and the Two Gates are ones where I will immediately know the chief principal melody. You know, like Two Gates, where it's da 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 da. That's that's cool. That's a cool as hell melody. But then yeah. I look at Cosmic Fusion, seven mm -hmm. minutes and twenty seven seconds, and I think to myself, which one was that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. I don't remember. You know, yeah. it's kind of yeah. like it's just not as memorable as mm -hmm. some of his other stuff. I think it's the most important Arion album, hundred percent. But it is not one that I would tell people you should check out Arion. Listen to this album; it'll change your life. You'll be like, because no, yeah. no, that's the human equation. You know, that's yes. the one to start with. <laughs> I was going to say, easiest, yeah. yeah, it's the easiest Arion album to appreciate from uh, from the get go. And I think a lot of that is partly due to the fact that James Labrie is on it. Because a yes. lot of progressive metal fans will be very familiar with the Bree sound, and you'll either love them or hate them. Don't get me, you know, yeah. That. But you'll but you'll I, hear it immediately. Exactly, you'll hear it immediately. You'll recognize. It. And same with Mikhail Ackerfeld. You know, I mean, maybe Mike Baker not so much because not as many people are familiar with Shadow Gallery, but they should be because, they frankly, be. Room Five, King, that's uh -huh. a good album. That's a really good album. But no, the the biggest weakness, like I say, I think of Into the Electric Castle is that I think it is. An album that loves its own narrative more than it does the idea of people appreciating the music. And that's fine. Oh. Yeah. But it's not good enough as a entry point for the band. This is very much the, despite it being his biggest selling album like that he's ever put out, even today, this is still his biggest seller. It's weird to me that it's one of the least accessible of his like big albums you know so let's let's take that energy and we're going to put that into the the final mm. the final phase of mm, this mm, mm. i always i always start like i always lead that up and prime the pump with like what's negative yeah. about that into the platinum concept album test oh yes here because, we go. <laughs> yeah yeah because this way people can't be like well i can't think of any bad things i'm like are you sure because we just spent 10 <laughs> minutes talking about it yeah, so, yeah 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 this is where you know um we have five questions and each question is either a pass or a fail. Mm -hmm. And that will then lead us to what type of an album are we dealing with? Are we dealing with a platinum record where they pass all five? Gold is all is four of the five. Uh, silver is three. Bronze is two. Tin is one. And then if it gets zero, then it's a trash record. <laughs> Throwing in the bin. Straight, <laughs> straight to the bin. 
That's right. Oh, it's Operation uh, Mindcrime 2. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, um, so let's and we can talk about these and ultimately Absolutely. I always give I always give the guest uh kind of final say about this. Sure. sure. But the first and they kind of get progressively harder to pass. So mm. the first one is pretty low bar is okay. is the concept original? Is this an original concept? I would say pass on that one. Yeah. I would say it's definitely a more original concept because like I say a lot of concept albums they will go oh it's about the existentialism of the human psyche <laughs> and it's like oh, oh cool another one of those cool love that. Yeah. Um yeah. you don't see many which I kind of want to repurpose into a D&D campaign because <laughs> I uh-huh. totally do. I really want to do this. I think it'll be a lot of fun. But yeah. it, it's it's yeah. a wacky little album in terms of its narrative structure. So I think personally, for me, it's I've not seen anything quite like it from a narrative perspective before. So I would quite happily put this in the pass rather than the fail section. Hundred yeah. percent. I I agree, especially like when this album came out because I do want to put it into mm. context. Like there was nothing like this. Like the closest no, that it. I think we got was like Rush doing like Twenty One Twelve or yeah, you know, and that wasn't even a full concept record. It was just a song. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't have like this big spl- space exploration, mm-hmm. but like talking about human emotions when you know, hey, you have that final twist at the end. Like the Venn diagram between prog nerds and D and D nerds is practically a circle. Uh, so you know, there's two of us here. Uh, <laughs> right. Let me just get and, my little D and D get the GM hat on. You know, absolutely. <laughs> and like the amount of times that I've pitched this type of a game to mm. my players. I, I I can count on more than two hands, right? Mm-hmm. And they're all like, I don't know, that sounds a little too metaphysical. That sounds, <laughs> we just want to go and slay dragons. I'm like, okay, that's fair, that's fair. <laughs> so yeah, and actually seeing that in an album, I think is just a lot of fun. So yeah, I think this oh, is a very absolutely. clean pass. I think yeah. this is definitely- No a, arguments, you know. Yeah. A, a strong one. So that's one for one. Question number two, does the music reinforce the theme of the concept? Definitely a pass on this one as well, 100%. I think as we discussed earlier, the fact how intelligently it manages to play with the listener's emotions to reflect the emotions of the participants in the experiment itself, I think is brilliant. It's quite subtle as well when you first think about it, because think whatever is music, it goes through a variety of emotions, who cares, whatever, right? But then you realize the whole point of what the Forever of the Stars is doing is to play with the emotions so that his species can experience them himself Mm -hmm. it's it's crazy it's so good it's so brilliant and i absolutely love it and it's one of those things where if you are going naked into this album and with no expectations and you're really paying attention and that little plot revelation at the end and then you stop and think about what you've listened to and you start to think um, unpack everything you realize oh my god you know that moment when there was so much joy and happiness in the music that was deliberate that was yeah. done deliberately. Or when it's dark and depressing and scary and intense and over, like, again, completely deliberate. All part of the machinations of the forever of the stars, which is, ah, oh, mm, love yeah. it. Yeah, if there was like a crowning jewel point or like a, a, a centerpiece of this record, that really would be it. And it's a little bit of a shame that it comes at the end, but I don't think you mm. can put it any other way, right? It's the big twist yeah. at the end of the movie, Exactly, right? that's the, it. That's it's it. the Tyler Durden. It's the, yeah. it's the he's <laughs> yeah, been dead exactly. the whole time. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's the whole and sixth it, sense thing. You know, it is. That's and it. it's, yeah, yeah. it's, 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 Every time you listen to it, you you get more and more out of it. And it makes mm. repeated listens that much more enjoyable because you're like, ah, so that's, that's what they were capturing. That was the whole thing. Exactly. Point so, exactly. Yeah. I think I think that's another easy pass. I think that's that so far two for two. Um, we're going into We've the avoided third. tin. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> We've avoided tin. We're we're clearly dealing with at least a silver. Uh, or Excellent. I guess a bronze. Uh, this is where they start to get a little harder though. Ooh. And this is something that we've been talking about. Question three is, is it accessible to the casual listener? Can somebody off the street sit down and listen to it with ease? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. No way. This is a hard fail in that respect. My God. Occasionally I will put progressive like rock and metal albums on in the house during like whenever. This isn't one I would expect my partner to want to sit through. And yeah. I would not begrudge them at all for that because I understand that this is a dense record. It's a heavy yeah. record. It's very much a record that requires a kind of understanding of the artist in a lot of ways before you can really appreciate it, you know. I mean, progressive rock and metal in general isn't as accessible as other things. Like, you go to a party, somebody puts a Dua Lipa album on, most people are probably going to enjoy that. You yeah. put something on, like, by Charlie XCX, people are going to enjoy that, whatever. Yeah. Um, 
you're not going to be the kind of guy who goes to a party, or maybe you, I am, I don't know, I haven't started yet, and, you know, and puts on Lark's tongues in aspic, and is like, ah, oh, here's the bot, let's, let's go, let's go. go. You know? I mean, you would find out who your best friend is going to be for that night. I mean, there is that. that. <laughs> there is that. And I feel that Into the Electric Castle, again, short of maybe a couple of songs, like, I think The Two Gates is a bit of a bop. Uh-huh. And I think um, Amazing Flight, despite being like 10 minutes long, again, is a bit of a bop. But outside yeah. of that, it's very much an album which it rewards patience and it rewards a a mind which is willing to shut off the world in order to appreciate it fully. And most people, and I know it might sound like, <laughs> most people don't understand progressive <laughs> folk. I'm so much cleverer than you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not going to yeah. be like that guy. But most people don't vibe prog rock because of the fact that it is often perceived as being pretentious, over the top, overblown, overworked. And in a lot of ways, Into the Electric Castle is all of those things. And for people like us who do appreciate progressive rock, who've lived most of our lives enjoying these types of sounds, it's fine. Yeah. But for Joe Public off the street, they are just like, they're going to take one look at the runtime and be like, nah, fam, nah. Nah, you know? man, nah. Yeah, <laughs> like, this, like, is, this is... This is the kind of album that I think you need a lot of context for, right? It's like it's like grabbing somebody from rural Canadian like farmland and then giving them like straight out of Compton and being like, you 100 <laughs> percent like those are two different worlds. Those are two different like experiences. Oh, I want this to happen so badly. <laughs> right? And I feel like what's this in a boot, eh? Yeah, hey, b- <laughs> hey, bud. Get off the, yeah, uh, my Ameri- like my Canadian accent is just going to come right out. And like, oh, you dang hoser, go jump in the lake, eh? Ah. Uh, but like, I-, I feel like there's a lot of context within this record that you really need to know going into. And if you don't mm. have that context, you're just going to be bored out of your mind. You're going to be yeah, like, what absolutely. on earth is going on? Like, if I were to introduce this record to anybody, I would first do it with their live DVD so that you can have the visuals, you can have yep. the kind of, you know, narrative story brought to you in that kind of a sense. But mm, yeah, sitting mm, down and mm. listening to this record for the first time. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. of a lot. It's a it's lot a of a lot. lot. And for yeah. those for those of us that love a lot of a lot, we love it. But for Joe Schmo off the street, eh, probably not. So yeah. unfortunately, that's going to be a fail. Uh, so that's, <clears> that's, that's two for three. These last two, I always figure, are the harder ones. So this is, mm. this is where it's going to come down. Mm. Are we going to deal with just a bronze record or are we going to get a little bit higher? Um, Let's find the out. fourth question is, is the music solid from start to finish? Are there any dips in qualities or any duds mm. in the music? Oh, jeez. Yeah. No, why do you give me such difficult questions? <laughs> See, I, I oh. can prime the pump because I, I have thought about this question, especially for yeah. this record, in that, like, because there's no big high on this record, mm. like there are songs that I like more than others. Oh, for sure, for sure. I can't really say that there's any real big dips either. No. So like, I, I feel like it's it's always at the same quality from start to yeah. finish. Uh, there's a couple of little sort of bit which are like, boop, boop. Yeah, boop. but like- Like that, but it never goes like that. You know. Correct, like there's no track on here that I would ever skip. You know, this no, isn't no, like- no, no on um universal migrator part one and two where like there are tracks ooh, on ooh, there that ooh, i will ooh. skip you know you, there are... you you take universal migrators <laughs> one's name out of your mouth i love that record oh, part two, i love them too sure. <laughs> i love them too but there are some dips there are some dips like there are some okay, tracks okay, on there fine, that i love fine, fine. But, i will concede you know, i will concede uh, to just that, comparing sure. right comparing and okay. contrasting um, okay, this fair, isn't fair, fair. like the source or transitus or you know, where there is definitely some dips in qualities on those I mean, records. you could argue that Transitus has no dips in quality, because when you start at the bottom, it's you know, true. it's yeah, like... It's mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started at the bottom, and now we're still at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so upset by that album. I'm, I'm, so, I'm still not okay. Even, like, the comic book couldn't save it. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like, so how, I, to, how to basically find out you, if somebody's a real aerial fan, you say, what's your favourite? And if they say Transitus, at that point, you just basically just leave. You just you don't even say anything. You just turn around and <laughs> walk away because that person isn't worth your time gosh yeah that i think from anyway anyway we'll we'll talk about later yeah that's a that's a subject for another that's another that's another episode (laughs) um no but i think the way you described that i was i was almost willing to give this one a fail i nearly would have put this one out of fail but the context that you've given to the way you've described um 
about the whole dips and rises and dips and rises and stuff like that. You're absolutely right. There isn't a single track on here that I do, that I think I would skip. I think every track has its place. Every track, not even just from a narrative perspective or like a uh -huh. sort of importance within the structuring of the story, because you can work around that by moving the lyrics to another song or whatever. Yeah. But musically, I think each track is still worthwhile. Like there mm. are, like I say, it's it's more of a straight line with a couple of wobbles more than it is like a roller coaster going up and down, up and down, up and down, or anything. Mm -hmm. like that. So, with that context in mind, I would say this is a narrow pass, a very mm. narrow pass. We're talking like just as it's a, a wobbling line, it's very much a wobbling line of a, a pass. I would say. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Like it. It just squeaks by. It's not a squeaky clean yeah. squeak, no, but it's still no, a squeak. No. You know? <laughs> That's it, yeah. Um, so yeah, that moves it from a tin to a silver. Uh, or sorry, a bronze to a silver. So that's three out of four. And we make um, a gold. I know, I know. We, mm. we, we, we might be able to make this a gold, but I think we've already talked about that it probably won't because the fifth question okay. is, okay. is the album the perfect length? Is it too long or too short? <laughs> Dang it all! It's a hard fail for length, I'm afraid. Yeah. It really is. The thing is, though, right? The thing is, is that I dunk on Into the Electric Castle for its length, right? Okay, but yeah. look, let's look at it this way. Human equation, one hour yeah. forty-one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Planet Y, one hour forty-two. Yeah. Right. The theory yeah. of everything, one hour twenty-nine, and the source, one hour twenty-eight. So this is not an unusual length of album for Arion, but the problem is, for a one hour 40 plus record, it feels a lot longer. Uh -huh. Human Equation bops along at a really great pace. It never feels its length. There's always something tasty or interesting or exciting or different just lurking around the corner. And the same I feel is true of Planet Y, of the source, of the theory of everything, and they all feel a lot shorter than the sum of their parts. But yeah. despite the very similar length in these albums, Into the Electric Castle is a much longer album. And uh -huh. I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that the music isn't as accessible and it really suffers as a result, making for an album that is much longer feeling than it actually is. Yeah, yeah. And I always go back to whenever I see a long record, it's like, can you justify the length? Yeah. Is yeah. there a justification for the length? Because as yeah. you mentioned, Human Equation, Zero One, even uh, the Theory of Everything, like they justify their length. They mm -hmm. justify mm -hmm. it in the music and they justify it in the themes and they justify it in the story. I don't know if, like, if you had put this to a single disc and trimmed off quite a bit, like, mm -hmm. I think you wouldn't compromise too much of the listening experience. I think you can consolidate. You could, mm -hmm. you know, you can rework it in such a way. Absolutely, that you could do. Absolutely. More. Whereas Even I don't if you only shave like 20 minutes off, I think it would be better. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think that the length of this record does, unfortunately, bring it down a little bit. It does. So, yeah, for me, this one is also a fail. I think that's, yeah. you know. And yeah, that's, that's, I think we're quite unanimous on that. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that is the biggest hurdle for me with this record mm. is the runtime. It's just like, ah, uh, do I want to spend an hour and 40 Absolutely. minutes listening to this record or do I want to spend it listening to two or three other records? So, exactly. Because, I mean, that's yeah. ultimately the big problem when it comes to double discs. Like for me, anything oh. which like sort of like peaks over 60 minutes in length, like the older that I'm getting, the more I think to myself, are you worth it? You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm a working man doing nine yeah. to five every day who owns a yeah. house and is struggling with to find time for anything. Y'all yeah. got to prove to me that you're worth it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and a lot of times anything that goes over 60 minutes, a lot of albums just aren't worth that amount of time. It's just like, come on, you know, I've got things to do. That's <laughs> right. Know? That's right. So that puts the score at the end of the day of three out of five, which makes it a silver record. And a silver record is still very good because these are hard questions. Mm. And yeah, for those that love this record, they love it. You know, it's and it's. Well, I love this record. Oh, absolutely. I, mm, I yeah. have grown to really appreciate it. And especially within the lead up to this mm. and the conversation that we've had, I've grown to really, really appreciate it and really grow to like hold it in a special place. I went out and got the the big uh, live electric castle. Did I remember you showed yeah. me that. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, ooh, yeah. it's nice. It's, it's real pretty. Um, oh, I love it. So yeah, and I mean, I still love this. So the Silver Album is still great. You know, we, we hold it in high regard. 
Um, we do, we do. And there's still yeah, hope I, for Arya to come back from the disaster of Transitus, which I just want to just dunk yeah, on one last time. I, I do not, I do not want him to end his Arion career with Transitus, and I really no. like. It's a shame that he decided to call it an Arion record because he doesn't it, feel like one. It doesn't feel like one. It really at all. doesn't. It should have just been <laughs> yeah. like an Arion side project, like yeah. um, Lost in the New like, Reel or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know? I, I, I quite like that one as well. Like oh, I Lost love the New Reel. Lost great in the Reel. The first is that the one with is... Pink Beetles and a Purple Zeppelin? Because that's a yes, great show. Yeah, because I it's love like, that. There, there are two discs, right? You have the story yeah. on disc one and then all the weird stuff on the disc two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Both yeah. discs independently of one another. Yeah, yeah. They're so good. They're so good. Absolutely. So. But like, it, it shouldn't have been an Arion record, that one, like at all. Correct. Correct. Like, even the cover art's terrible. Like, what is going on? It's yeah, like, we were, you... yeah, and that was something that we didn't even talk about. Yeah. Like this, this <sighs> record started that artwork, and I can't remember the artist's yes, name, did. but but it's he, so good. He used that artist for like almost every other record yeah. outside of the source, uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. and Transitus, uh, for yeah. all of his stuff, and even some of his stuff with like, oh, was it Star One, One Star? Yes, um, Star. Oh yeah, the latest Star One, um, yeah. Revel in Time. Oh my Revel god, I time. got that ridiculous price vinyl of that the other day and it's so good it looks so good in that scale yeah. I was like, yo oh, and so, that's it like incredible. you gotta you gotta get like the big you know you gotta see it big so oh absolutely uh, yeah. and that's that's about it thank you so much ian for coming on and chatting about my pleasure as always castle um anything you want to leave the listener with anything you want to Ooh, promote and say oh Outside of please watch my videos, I am like millimeters from being able to claim money off Daddy YouTube, which is very exciting. Last I checked this morning, I'm at like three thousand nine hundred ninety hours out of four thousand records. <laughs> oh, so go and show some love. Let's get yeah. this boy paid. Let's get him his bread. I can't wait to get one pound fifty five a month. Quit my day job, baby. Let's go. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> That'll be the dream. That'll be the but dream. no, apart from from that. Uh, you know, it's it's live your lives, love each other, and be as Bill and Ted always said, be excellent to each other. You know, amazing. Thank you so much for coming on, chatting about the Electric Castle, and uh, I haven't figured out a signature call out yet, like a, a finishing line for this. You know, in my regular albums I, or my regular videos, I always say mm. notes out, but I haven't figured out a good catchphrase for this one. So, workshop it. We'll, we'll it workshop it. One. Yeah, all that I always say is just, bye. Bye. <laughs>